Hi. In this video, we're going to review the Tinoco Pure One S11, and that's this unit right here. So what do you get with your Pure One S11? Well, we've got it laid out here, and we're going to walk through it. Now, we actually have the S11 Tango. There are three versions of S11, and we'll talk about those in a little bit. So this is the Tango. We've got the handheld component. We have a wand. We've got two cleaner heads, this one for carpet and this one for bare floors. Of course, when you put these three pieces together, that gives you your stick vacuum. It also comes with a host of tools. We've got a crevice tool, two-in-one brush tool. This is a hair cutting tool. It's actually got a little tiny blade in here as well, and you use it to pull hair off the brush roll and cut hair off of the brush roll should they get tangled up. This is a mini power tool. It's actually motorized, which is good. This is a pre-filter cleaning tool. We'll talk about that. A little later as well. An extra pre-filter. We've also got one sitting in the handheld here. This is your charger. This is your wall mount and there's room on here for several tools. And this is your manual. Now in terms of the three models, as I said, this is what you get with the Tango. Now a step down from the Tango would be the Pure One S11. In that case you do not get this specialized cleaner head for hard floors. This has the soft roller brush. You don't get that. This is your Pure One S11. Now, another step backwards is the Pure One S11 Spartan. In that case, you do not get this motorized um, tool. So this is your S11 Spartan. So let's take a more detailed look at the tools. This is the crevice tool. You can see it's got a black button on the top. That allows it to click into place, secure. It's not going to fall off when you're vacuuming. To take it off, you simply press the button again and it slides off. It's a better system than those tools you push on and pull off. And that black button is also on the two-in-one dusting brush and the mini motorized tool. It will also all go onto the end of the wand. And that gives you extra reach in case you need it. Now the two-in-one dusting brush here has kind of a hard end on it, but you can extend these bristles out. They're very soft and good for dusting. This is your mini motorized tool, and it has a brush roll with soft bristles, and it is motorized. You know, sometimes when you get a vacuum, we get a similar tool, but it might be run on vacuum suction. We've always found the motorized versions to generally be a little bit better. And if this uh, brush roll gets bound up with a lot of hair or something, they've designed it easily, or they've designed it so that it easily comes out for cleaning and goes right back in. Good system. This is the pre-filter cleaning tool, and we're gonna show you how that works. Now remember, we've got two filters. This is the clean filter. We've also got one in here. To clean this filter, first we'll take it out and we'll put it into the pre-filter cleaning tool. And we'll take the new filter and pop it into the handheld. It just kind of pops in like that. Now we'll take the pre-filter cleaning tool and put it on the end of the handheld. Now the idea here is to run it in max mode for maybe five or ten seconds while rotating the filter in there. So let's give that a try. Okay, so hopefully we now have a clean filter. Now we can just leave the filter in there if you want. Now exactly how much of the dust off of that filter ended up in the dust canister? And did some of it possibly also end up in the new filter? I don't know, but that is how the pre-filter cleaning tool works. Now we've got the Tango version of the S11, and it comes with both of these cleaner heads. If you've got the Pure One S11 or the Pure One S11 Spartan, you're only going to get this cleaner head. Uh, Tinoco call this a multitasker cleaner head. It's designed for carpet, but it will also do bare floors. If you've got those two versions of the vacuum, you don't have any choice. This is what you're going to use on bare floors. It has two rows of very soft bristles and one row of really stiff, stiff bristles. Uh, it's also got headlights on the front. They turn on uh, as soon as the vacuum is turned on. And should you need to get in here and clean this brush roll, which you probably will, especially if you've got hair, thread, string and stuff tangling on it, the brush roll does come out for easy cleaning. 
can just use a quarter. There's a little kind of screw-like device here. We give it a twist counterclockwise. Little bracket here in the end will lift up and come out. And then you can pull that whole um, brush roll assembly out for cleaning. And putting it back in is pretty easy generally. And this bracket, sometimes you gotta fool with this a little bit. Well, let's see, here we go, there we are, perfect. Now we just give it a short kind of clockwise twist, and that is it, done. Now the um, soft roller cleaner head, again, this one has headlights on the front, and the brush roll can be removed with exactly the same system. The S11 has a 21.6 volt lithium ion battery pack. That's this right here. And what makes this kind of nice is that it is detachable. There's a button on this side and a button on this side. Now you have to press them both in at the same time and pull the battery back and it comes off. Now, what makes a detachable battery kind of nice is that you know, if you have two of them, well, you can effectively double your runtime. When the battery you're using is run down, you can grab another one that hopefully has been on charge, pop it in the vacuum, and continue vacuuming, effectively doubling your runtime. Now, the S11, unfortunately, though, only comes with one. If you want a second battery pack, you'll have to buy it. Charging the vacuum is pretty straightforward and pretty easy if you are going to install the wall mount. And they've even given you a couple of screws here and wall anchors to help with that. Now, we've plugged in the charger to the bottom of the wall mount here. You would typically install it up on the wall and you just hang the vacuum in it and it charges. And they've even got some spots on here for tools and compartment in the top here will charge a second battery should you decide to buy one. So that's all pretty handy. Now, what if you don't want to install your wall mount? You know, maybe you don't want to put holes in your wall or for whatever reason you decide that's not what you want to do. Well, then you're thinking, well, I can probably take this charging cable and plug it into the, to the handheld component, but you can't. Well, maybe we can take this battery off and use that. No, you can't. Unfortunately, you really have to use the wall mount. Now, if you don't want to put it on a wall, you're going to have to put it on the ground or a counter or a tabletop or something in order to charge the vacuum. That's a little awkward in our opinion. What we do is we use this um, top battery charger and we just put the battery in there and you can see it is charging. Alternatively, you can take the um, entire uh, handheld component here, put it in, and it will charge here as well. But all in all, it really would have been nice if you could charge the handheld or the battery directly with the charger and if you didn't have to use the wall mount. The vacuum has two power modes and you can toggle between them on a button right here on top of the handheld unit. Now, the two power modes are auto and max. Max is fairly straightforward, pretty obvious what that does, but auto is a little bit different. There is a dust sensor built into the vacuum here, right at the front of the handheld component actually, and it's measuring the amount of dust coming in in the airflow. And when that amount of dust goes up, well, the suction power goes up. It's all happening in real time. When the amount of dust goes down, the suction goes down. So that's auto power mode. The top of the handheld here is actually a display and it has a number of indicator lights on it. You've got one here telling you if there is a tangle in the brush roll, one here telling you if there is a blockage, another here will tell you if there's a malfunctioning dust sensor, and one up here to tell you if the Wi-Fi is working or not. Now, I'm just gonna close off the end of the vacuum, turn it on so we can see one of those uh, indicator lights come on. Okay, so we can see that was the blockage light. You also probably notice that bright blue loop, that's a dust monitoring loop, and what that's doing is kind of telling you the amount of dust or debris coming into the vacuum. That loop changes color from blue to red depending on the amount of debris uh, and the incoming airflow. So what I'm going to do now 
is actually turn the vacuum on. We'll see it, uh, see that dust monitoring loop blue. Then I'll pick up a little bit of debris and we'll see it turn, or at least parts of it turn to red. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the trigger here. We've taken the battery off of the handheld here so we're not constantly turning it on and off. Um, when you push the trigger in, the uh, vacuum power is on. When you release the trigger, the trigger comes back out and the vacuum power is off. Now, that means if you want vacuum power on, you've got to hold your finger on the trigger. And that's the case with a lot of these uh, cordless units. That is the case with Dyson. We've seen people kind of complain sometimes that um, they've got to hold their, that trigger down all the time and their finger gets tired. So Tinico came up with the idea here of this trigger lock. Now we can just lock that into place and it locks the trigger in on power mode and you don't have to hold it down with your finger. It's also easy to release. It's kind of a handy feature. I think something needs to be said about the look of the machine. They've used a lot of clear plastic and it allows you to uh, look into the internals of the vacuum. For example, up here we can see the very shiny HEPA filter. And down here you can even see some of the printed circuit boards. And even the top of the battery is clear. It's a pretty neat look. To give you an idea where the suction level of the S11 stands, we've created this table. And in the table, we've also got the Tinoco Pure One S12, along with a host of Dyson cordless vacuum cleaners. Now, over in the max suction column, we can see the Tinoco Pure One S11 at 130 air watts of suction, which places it somewhere in between the Dyson V8 at 115 and the Tinoco Pure One S12 at 150. Now, you can look further down in this table and see some pretty big numbers. Uh, the Dyson V11 at 185, the D V15 at 230, but it's worth considering that these are heavier and substantially more expensive vacuums. So let's talk about run times. And the run time is the amount of time the vacuum will operate on a fully charged battery. Now we've got a table here, we've got three different scenarios, and we've got the two vacuum power modes, auto power mode and max power mode. Now let's look at that first scenario, non-powered tool. Now, those figures come from the manufacturer. And when they're talking about a non-powered tool, they're talking about something like the crevice tool, the two-in-one uh, brush tool. They don't have motors, they're not powered. So the uh, scenario would be something like the handheld with a non-powered tool on it, perhaps the handheld and the wand with a non-powered tool at the end of the wand. We don't know for sure, but they got about 40 minutes in auto power mode and about 10 minutes in max power mode. Now we didn't do that test, uh, so we don't really have uh, a comparison to the manufacturer's numbers, but we really felt that people would like to know what kind of run times are you going to get in stick vac mode with the two different cleaner heads? So we went ahead and we did those tests. Now the first scenario here, carpet cleaner head on medium pile carpet. So that's the setup you see here. That's the carpet cleaner head or what Tinoco sometimes refer to as the multitasker cleaner head. And in auto power mode, we got 27 minutes and 18 seconds. Not bad. Max power mode, 10 minutes and 42 seconds. Then we shift it over to the tile, change the cleaner head out to the soft roller cleaner head, auto power mode, 29 minutes and 49 seconds, almost a half an hour, not too bad, especially on a single battery, and max power mode, 10 minutes and 40 seconds. Okay, now one thing I should point out here is when we did these tests, the vacuum was stationary and the trigger was held down and we used a stopwatch to determine how long it would run until it stopped but it was in one place. So in auto power mode, you're probably gonna pick up any kind of dust and debris in, a, in the first couple of seconds, actually. And then after that, auto mode is probably gonna be kept pretty low because it's not gonna encounter any more dust and debris. So we have to kinda of consider these two as perhaps best case scenario. The dust canister of the S11 is a reasonable size. It's 0.16 gallons. Now we've got the V7, Dyson V7, Dyson V8 here. They're 0.14 gallons. So this is a tiny bit larger. Again, I consider it a reasonable size. At least it's not too small. Really small dust canisters will have you emptying frequently as you're vacuuming. The very end is the Shark Wanvac system. Dust canister on that one is 0.03 gallons. So that's 
quite small. This one's almost five times larger. Now I'm also going to show you how easy it is to empty. There's simply a button here. Press it in. Bottom door opens up. Dust and debris come out. Now sometimes you will probably have to put your hand in here and pull some stuff out. Of course this assembly in here comes out pretty easy if you have to clean it. Got a bit of hair on that. And um, you know it's pretty easy to put back in. All in all, not hard to empty. The vacuum has a few filters and they all reside here in the handheld component. So I'm just going to take that off. Now to get at your pre-motor filters, I'm going to open up the dust canister and give this little assembly inside a twist. And this comes out. It's actually a mesh filter here. This axe has a kind of pre-filter. This can just be wiped down with a damp cloth if it gets dirty. Inside of that is this pre-filter that we saw earlier. Um, and at the back of the vacuum here, you press in a couple of tabs, and this is your HEPA filter. Okay. Now, in terms of maintaining these things, Tinico say that you should clean this pre-filter with that pre-filter cleaning tool after every vacuuming session. That's a lot. It's a little extra work, but that's what they're asking you to do. In addition, they figure you should uh, wash this. It is washable, fortunately. You should wash it every month and replace it after about six months. So it is, I guess I would call it a consumable. The HEPA filter, they say you should uh, rinse this uh, about every three months. It is washable as well. And replace it about once a year. As mentioned, the vacuum does have a HEPA filter here. So you've got HEPA level filtration with the unit and the other part of that which is very important is that this is a sealed system so all of the air coming into the vacuum is going to go through those filters before it's exhausted from the machine you're not going to get unfiltered air escaping through uh, you know poor seals or cracks or anything like that we did do noise level tests on the S11. We have a digital noise level meter. Now we're not going to show a big table here full of uh, decibel ratings in different power modes for a host of different vacuum cleaners, but suffice it to say that the S11 is a pretty quiet machine. Now beside it here, this black and white unit, that's the Tinoco Pure One S12. That is the quietest cordless vacuum we've ever tested. It's the quietest in low power. It's also the quietest in maximum power. Now getting a um, noise level reading in low power for the S11 is kind of tricky because it really only has auto and that power mode goes up and down. But in max power mode, it is the second quietest machine we've ever tested, so it's second only to the Tinoco. So all in all, it's a pretty comfortable unit to be using in terms of noise level. This table gives you an idea where the S11 stands in terms of weight compared to a number of other cordless stick vacs that we've reviewed over the years. As you can see, the Pure One S11 at 5.7 pounds is fairly lightweight. Many cordless vacuums today are two-in-one machines, meaning they're a stick vacuum and they're also a handheld. Now we weighed the handheld component of the S11 at three and a half pounds, which we find a reasonable weight. Uh, you know, it's not, it's not gonna strain your wrist or your arm too much. Fairly easy to use. We've actually weighed the components, these handheld components of a lot of our cordless machines and most of them are between three, three and a half pounds. Um, when they get heavier, you start to feel it. And some examples of that would be the Dyson V15 Detect here, quite a bit bigger, a little heavier. You feel that a lot more. This is four and a half pounds. And of course, there is the V11 Outsize. This is the handheld component. As you can see, it's very large. And we're looking at 5.4 pounds here, weighs almost as much as the entire Tinoco S11, and you probably wouldn't want to do a lot of extended handheld work with this. We find movement on carpet to be average. Um, it feels a little like it's floating on the surface. When you turn, you'll still get um, a fair bit of that forward motion. It doesn't necessarily turn really tight. Um, so movement on carpet feels average. Movement on hard floors is better. The unit goes pretty much where you want it to go and you've got these gripping rubber wheels. Now, they're also here on the hard floor cleaner head. So 
it does feel much more positive than it does on carpet. It would be nice if the S11 would turn more sharply. That is the greatest angle you can get when turning the machine. Some machines will turn much more sharply. This is the Dyson V8, and as you can see, you can get a full 90 degree turn out of this. That sometimes comes in handy when you're cleaning up against an edge. The vacuum has a pretty low profile, which is great, but you will notice that when trying to get under really low furniture, that cleaner head will actually come up off the floor if you lower the vacuum. So that's kind of going to limit um, the angle that you can come down before that cleaner head is no longer touching the floor. Now you can turn it sideways and still, you know, keep the cleaner head on the floor, but it's a little awkward. We performed some cleaning tests on this low pile carpet. We created our own debris out of chili flakes, flax seeds, split green peas, some ground up Cheerios. We put that in a five foot long line on the carpet and ran the vacuum over it in about a 10 second pass. Let's take a look at that. I think you could see in that test that the S11 did a pretty good job. It picked up almost everything. Now we also ran the Dyson V7 motor head just for comparison purposes. And I think the V11 picked up a little more than the V7. Now it's worth noting here, however, that our V7 is four years old and we've used it quite a bit. Our S11 is fairly new. In addition, the S11 was an auto power mode. So when it encounters a lot of debris like we had in that test, well, the uh, power of the vacuum is going to be elevated and that's going to help with overall pickup. Your V7 has low and max power modes and we ran that in low. There is no automatic power mode. We also performed a similar test on tile and we made sure the vacuum was again in auto power mode. Now, we did that test twice. We used the carpet cleaner head and the hard floor cleaner head. You know, because it's going to depend on which S11 you get. Again, we've got the Tango with the two cleaner heads. The other two models only come with this multitasker cleaner head. So let's take a look at those. We have calculated percentage pickup um, for all of these tests that you're seeing, and those are available in tables on the website. But um, just visually, from what you could see in those video clips, it's pretty apparent that this soft roller cleaner head, the one that's designed specifically for hard floors, it did a really good job picking up almost everything. Now we also ran this multitasker cleaner head and it did a reasonable job. Reasonable for this kind of tool. These are, you know, these are designed to do both carpet and hard floors. And of course they're not quite as effective as a specialized hard floor tool on hard flooring. And we could see that this one had a tendency to push some of the debris forward as well. Although that was kind of easily picked up with the cleaner head after the test. Now we're going to run a hair test. We've got long black human hair and short white pet hair. We're going to put it on this carpet, see how the vacuum performs.
Well, pickup was okay, but we got a lot of hair tangled on the brush roll. Would have been nice if that hair made its way up to the dust canister for disposal, but it didn't. We actually took the brush roll off and cleaned it. Uh, you know, it's uh, not great performance on hair. So let's take a look at how well the mini motorized tool does on hair. Again, great pickup, but uh, we ended up with pretty much the same problem and a lot of tangling on the brush roll. As a quick aside, we did find that the tool did a pretty good job on basic debris. We performed an edge cleaning test by taking chili flakes and placing them right up tight against the wall, running the vacuum over it. So those edge cleaning tests, they're fairly average in our opinion. You know, we have seen some cordless units do a better job, and we've seen some cordless units do a worse job. In general, we find that the cordless machines are fairly average at edge cleaning. They're not quite up to the standard you'll see with some of the corded uprights, for example. We've run some of those, and in some cases they'll pick up pretty much everything. One way to clean up tight against the edges is to use the crevice tool. There is a smartphone app for the S11. We didn't download it and test it ourselves, but uh, we understand you can get it at Google Play, the App Store, the Tinoco website. You need iOS 9.0 or later, or Android 5.0 or later. It will show you a host of things like uh, the uh, percentage of battery charge remaining, uh, the filter status, number of hours that the vacuums worked, um, a number of things like that, including uh, troubleshooting and support, uh, tech support. So um, something you might want to check out. I hope you found this review of the Pure One S11 to be interesting and hopefully even helpful. Thanks very much for watching and please consider subscribing.